I will be what it says I will be. If you believe it, shout higher. Remember, higher means it shall come to pass. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. Daniel number 6, verses 1 to 16, and then 18 to 23. It pleased Darius so to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom. And over these three governors, of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king will suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and the satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could not find any charge or fault because he was faithful. Nor was there any error or fault found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the Lord of his God. So these governors and satraps thronged before the king and said thus to the king, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and satraps, the counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Pashis which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home, and in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since his early days. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any God or man within 30 days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, the thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Pashis, which does not alter. So they answered and said before the king, That Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show respect, regard, or gratitude for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself. And his heart on Daniel, and his heart was set on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men approached the king and said to the king, No, O king, that it is the Lord of the myths and passions that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed. So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Verses 18 to 23. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. And no musician was brought before him, and his sleep left him. 
And the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatsoever was found on him because he believed in his God. Because he believed in his God. Defeating workplace enemies. Defeating workplace enemies. Have you ever encountered someone in your workplace who tortured you and terrorized your life? Made your job difficult and made you dread going to work. Have you ever met such a person? If you have, can I see your hand? Thank you. Everyone fits into one out of three categories in the workplace. There is an ally. There are neutrals. And there are enemies. A workplace enemy is a colleague who plots and or executes a scheme to either prevent you from rising or put you in trouble. According to a survey carried out by Total Jobs and published on 20th February 2019, a survey of 7,000 United Kingdom workers, six out of 10 workers in the United Kingdom agreed that they had workplace enemies. 62% agreed that a colleague of theirs was considered a workplace enemy. The research revealed that 77% of workers in the United Kingdom were unhappy because of workplace enemies. Listen. 71% of these agreed that their workplace enemies were their age mates at work. 65% agreed that their workplace enemy were of the same gender with them. And 68% in this research pool agreed that their workplace enemies were those that they interacted with on a daily basis. Workplace enemies give you sleepless nights. They raise your blood pressure. They cause you to experience unnecessary anxieties. They make you dread going to work. Make you experience difficulties within your workplace and make it harder for you to relax even when you get home when you think of their antecedents or their activities. Daniel was appointed as a governor by Darius but workplace enemies decided not just to pull him down or displace him, but to destroy everything about his identity and destiny. In case you are not aware, workplace enemies are real. And for you to defeat them, you must understand the causes of workplace enemies, the characteristics of workplace enemies, and the cure for workplace enemies.